Thank you, Father, for fresh oil, fresh anointing. Thank you for making way where there seems to be no way. And thank you so much for your faithfulness. Ah, Would you turn to the book of Genesis, please? It's the first one. <laughs> you know, nothing greater than walking in the joy of the Lord. No matter what's going on in your life. You know, you may feel like garbage, but be joyful. Because the anointing overcomes the carnal senses. <laughs> the anointing overcomes the carnal senses. And, you know, no matter what you're going through, the enemy's always trying to get those carnal human precepts, senses activated. And they are activated. They're there. But the whole thing is, is that the anointing overcomes them. Actually, so you get to a place where you're not ruled by the senses, but that you rule the senses. Are you listening? So that you're no longer led by what's going on, how you feel, or anything else. And now, don't get me wrong. You use wisdom. In Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, would you read it with me? It says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God had divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness He called night. So evening and morning were the first day. Then God said, let there be firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. You know, as the Spirit brought me to some of the things that are happening right now, one of the things that I, that He revealed to me in this, and I've never seen this before, just in the first scripture, and we know that God is the creator. It says, in the beginning, God created. So we know the first thing God created was time. And then he created the heavenly things and then the, in other words, the spiritual things and then the, the natural things or the things of matter, the, the carnal realm. And, and in this, in between verses 1 and 2, we know that there was a, a period of time where the earth had fallen or the Lucifer had fallen and the earth was made with, out, and the earth was void. Amen. And, and the first thing that you see here after this is the word darkness. And darkness was on the face of the deep. That's the first word you see here now. After God is restoring. Now each, God chooses to restore. But the first thing he says is darkness is on the face of the deep. And then it says, and the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. In other words, he mentions the darkness because Darkness is the arena that was first. And now I'm going to share something with you because we know that um, everything out of the realm that God has created is darkness. It's darkness. And he's, now one of the things about the Spirit of God that is light, the Spirit of, it always exposes darkness. It always exposes darkness. But we see here that darkness was on the face of the deep because Lucifer, who was once considered light, fell and became a servant of his own darkness. And then in verse 3 it says, And the Lord said, Let there be light. In other words, let there be life. Now God was getting ready to restore life because light is life. But he said, let there be light. Now, we always look in an arena that, okay, he's beginning to move away the clouds because the earth was froze over and so forth, and and the earth was without form and void. And we understand that. Carnally, we understand it. Naturally, we understand that. That God was beginning to restore the earth because of its fallen state. And we have um, a full teaching on the six stages of the earth and so forth. But but in this, we're looking at this naturally that God began to move away things and light was getting ready to shine. But prophetically, 
In other words, the sun was beginning to shine through. But prophetically, he was speaking about life because light is life, that he was getting ready to restore life. Is everybody with me? And and God saw the light and that it was good and God divided the light from the what? Darkness. Again, light is life. He was getting ready to restore light or what we call restore life. Light is life in the natural, right? Does everybody understand? So what he was getting ready to do is restore life by light. And even in the natural, there's something that you must have to survive. Water. Water. So the verse right afterwards, what does he say? After God restores light, what does he do? Then God said, let there be firmament in the midst of the what? Waters. Waters. So he begins to replenish in the arena of the waters because he knows that the natural realm, are you listening? Life, the light of life, is established in the natural realm by water. Because without water, man cannot survive. Is everybody with me? Now, again, prophetically, light is life and water will be paralleled. Are you listening? In the arena of they coexist with one another because God created it. So you can't have life in the natural realm without what? Water. Now, you can't have life in the spirit realm without Christ. <laughs> Does everybody see this? Hallelujah. And it says, light, right? So, light and water are essential. Life and life without water, you can't survive in the natural realm. He concludes that light and darkness have no parallel. Now, I'm going to share this with you. Now, hold, hold tight. They have no parallel or coexistence, but they are an entity of themselves. They are what? An entity of themselves. Is everybody with me? They are an entity of themselves for a purpose predetermined by their creator, Christ. One is life and one is death. Now, I believe that the hidden agenda of the Creator is for darkness to prove the light. <laughs> I believe that the hidden agenda of the Lord in allowing darkness to be was to prove the light. Has everybody got it? Because if there wasn't darkness, it couldn't prove the light. Now, please understand the reason why I'm sharing with you is that they weren't coexisting with... Are you listening? Because they are different entities. One is a temporary, one is an eternal. Now, they're existing in their different entities, but they do not need each other to survive. Do you understand that? But I truly believe that the hidden agenda of God Almighty in allowing darkness to come forth was to prove that there is light. Has everybody got it? One is eternal, one is temporary. One is three-dimensional, one is two-dimensional. Now, one light always supersedes darkness because it's three more than three-dimensional. Is everybody with me? We know that light is eternal. But in this realm, we talk about it being three-dimensional and darkness is two-dimensional. Is everybody okay? Let's go to John 1. Again, I truly believe that the purpose that God allowed darkness, His hidden agenda, was to prove the light. So darkness will prove the light. John chapter 1. In verse 1. Again, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God and all things were made through Him and without Him nothing was made that was made. In verse 4, in Him was what? Life and the life was the what? Light of men. Because God created it. Right? Anything God creates is associated with light. 
And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not what? So darkness cannot comprehend. It can't comprehend. And, but it's being used to prove the light, but it don't know that. Because it can't comprehend it. <laughs> there was a man sent from God whose name was John, and this man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe or follow. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. In other words, his own creation, man, didn't receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God, or of light, or of the Spirit. Now, the light of man was overtaken by darkness, by death, because of the fall of Adam. Amen. Are you with me? Now, what had happened now, death of darkness overcasted on man because of man's fall. So on this, we know that the true light had to come into the realm, into the natural realm, to restore that which was stolen and bring true light to mankind again. But it, he did not remove darkness from this realm, did he? Why? Because he's still allowing darkness to prove the light. He's still allowing darkness to do what? Prove the light. So, until the true light came, now anyone willing to believe in his name and follow him, he that and those individuals would have the power and anointing to overcome darkness because they were the light. Go to first John chapter one. First John chapter one. And it says, and anybody willing to believe and receive and follow what be called children of God or what we call children of light. Children of light. See, we have a tendency not to go deep enough in the arena of what he's expressing to us. You know, we're, we're always looking in the arena of the battle of good and evil and so forth. But remember that Darkness was established to prove the light. So you already hit, you already overcame. Your cooperation with God maintains that. And in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 5, it says, This is a message that we have heard from Him and declared to you that God is what? God is what? Light. And in Him is no darkness at all. So how can darkness exist with light? It can't. They are two different entities. Has everybody got it? Let's go a little further. <laughs> if we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we what? We lie. And we do not practice the truth. Why? Because truth is light. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin, which is darkness. It's the presence of evil. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. We, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So when you confess your sin, you're actually exposing Darkness. By exposing darkness, you now can have dominion over it. So what our job is, is to expose sin. So you're exposing the presence of evil. But it's what is it doing now? When you expose sin, it proves the light. Has everybody got this? So in other words, we got to go deeper than what's been happening. It's just not about sin. It's about the presence of evil. It's the, it's the kingdom of darkness that needs to be exposed, but as it's exposed every time, it proves that there's light. 
If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Now, is his word light? Yes. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he himself is a propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the whole world. Now by this we know that we know him if we keep his commands. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commands is a liar and the truth is not in him. Why? Because you are keeping his commands are light. So we're always filling ourselves with light. So we're keeping the light. We're maintaining that. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself ought to walk just like he walked because God is light. God is light and truth is light. Sin is darkness proving the light. And the words of light overcomes the words of sin. Now get this. Because sin is the presence of evil and the presence of evil is always speaking. Didn't the presence of evil speak in the garden? So the presence of evil is expressing words. It's always speaking. So if we're abiding in Christ, we're abiding in His words, we're hearing His commands, and we're maintaining and keeping. That's why it says, He who keeps His commands. In other words, you're keeping His words which are light. And if you're keeping His words that are light, and you're speaking His words that are light, darkness will always be exposed to prove the light. Hello? Because the present... See, people think, oh my God, I sinned. No, the action is called a transgression. Sin is the presence of evil. That's why there was sin was already in the garden. But we use the word sin all the time as the act, but it's really not the act. The transgression is truly the act. The sin means the presence of evil. So there's the sin which is the presence of evil that's trying to mess with you because the presence of evil is shooting out words that cause you to sin in your mind. Once you've sinned in your mind, are you listening? Then you act it, or you what you call, you obey it. Then that's the transgression. Now, there, now what's happened after you've committed the act, it becomes an iniquity which comes on your family line until it's removed. So, sin, because sin is the presence of evil that releases words to promote darkness. To promote darkness. But the Bible says, He who is in us is greater than He who is in the world and we have the anointing we know all things. So every time they're trying to promote darkness, when you expose it, they're actually proving light. They're always proving light. And they don't even know they're being used. Go to John 12. John chapter 12. We are children of light. That's what we call eternal lights, right? We're eternal lights. <laughs> John chapter 12. In verse 35, let's read this together. Then Jesus said to him, a little while longer, the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is what? Going. While you have the light, believe in the light that you may become sons of light or children of light. These things Jesus spoke and departed and was hidden from them. But although he had done so many signs before them, he did not, they did not believe in him that the word of Isaiah, the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spoke, Lord, who has received our report and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe because Isaiah said again, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, lest they should see with their eyes unless they should understand with their hearts in turn, so that I should what? Heal them. 
These things Isaiah said when he saw his glory and spoke of him. Nevertheless, even among the rulers, many believed in him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. Then Jesus cried out and said, He who believes in me, believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And he who sees me, sees him who sent me. I have come as a light into the world, that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. And that word believe means to follow. If anyone hears my words and does not believe, I do not judge him. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. He who rejects me does not receive and does not receive my words, he has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last days. For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a command, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his command is everlasting life. Therefore, whatever I speak, just as the Father has told me, so I speak. So we are sons of light, following and obeying the light. And as the more you follow and obey the light, you become the offspring of His light. And the more that you maintain, the more you become light, lighter, lighter. To one day we're so light we're going to leave. John 3. <laughs> John chapter 3. And verse 16. Children of light. Children of the light. In other words, you are now children of life. You are now children of truth. You're children of life. Eternal life. And John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He who believes in Him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light. People don't realize that even if they've accepted Jesus as Savior and they're still practicing evil, dark is still there. In other words, they're still yielding to darkness. In other, and they, they don't realize, but the darkness in, in them hates the light and is trying to blind the individual. So they can't be seen so they can continue to dwell and feed off the individual. Is everybody with me? But if the true light is within them and they're in fellowship and hearing, they will eventually expose the darkness. And now the darkness will prove the light. <laughs> and God will get the glory. Is everybody all right? Again, verse 20. Let's go to verse 19. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. So if there's enough light in you, when you're going through stuff, you're going to run to the light, not from it. But if there's not enough light in you, you have a tendency to run from it. Are you listening? Because darkness is overtaking you. But he who does the what? Truth. Comes to the light. That his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in what? In God. So in other words, an individual that is not maintaining light, not maintaining the, lo the new life, is going to run from instead of run to. That's why many people run. 
claim to be believers, but they're not really following, are they? Instead of running to the light because the demonic forces now have attached themselves to them, they have a portrayal of godliness, but they're, they will not cooperate with God. They don't like to come into the presence of God. They want to do their own thing. Well, this is what I believe. There's always the, well, this is what I believe. This is what I believe. Has everybody got it? And then it's always contradictory to what God is saying. Hello. Darkness is always exposed, again, to prove the light. Now, it says that that's why there's evil and hatred globally are proving the light because they can't comprehend the light and the, the light can't be destroyed. See, darkness is going to be destroyed, but the light can't. So the light can't comprehend I mean, the darkness can't comprehend the light. Light will be forever. But darkness is temporary. But again, that's why there's evil and hatred globally are proving the light because they can't comprehend the light and light cannot be destroyed. So the devil is doing everything he can in every area. And you know, we are in critical times right now where we're seeing more and more evil being exposed, more and more hatred being exposed, more and more things being exposed, more, more and more people being exposed. In the area that you thought were right with God, now you're realizing they weren't. Because they were not maintaining the commands of God, which is light. They were not maintaining the filling they go back to the drugs, they go back to the pills, they go back to anger, they go back to jealousy, they go back to rage, they go back to bitterness, they go back to all of these things which feed darkness. Second Corinthians chapter 4. In verse 3. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 3. Children of light. Children of the light. You are carriers of light. Now the Bible tells us that through the eye gates, through the eye gates, what you see, and it's not just naturally, it's imagery, through the imagination, through the thoughts, what you see can diminish your light in you. What you allow to come in, what your thoughts are, what you see can diminish the light in you. He warns us. Jesus warns us in his Gospels. In verse 3 it says, but if our Gospel is veiled, now is the Gospel light? Amen. If it's veiled, it is veiled to those who are what? Perishing. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the Gospel, the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God, should what? Shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, Ourselves, your bondservants, for Jesus' sake. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness. He commanded light to shine out of darkness. Why? Because when he brought light back, what was here first? Darkness. And isn't darkness going to prove light? Amen. Who has shown in our hearts to give the light to the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are what? Hard pressed on every side. What do you hard pressed with on every side? Darkness. Amen. But see, darkness doesn't comprehend the light, so it doesn't actually know, it doesn't understand it. It's proving the light. <laughs> Boneheads, huh? It says we are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body of the, the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always 
delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal body. So then death is working in us, but life in you. I mean, that is so powerful. So we see that the gospel is light. Now, the words of God are light. So that's why he says, feed off of me. Feed off of my faithfulness. That's why Jesus gave the communion as an example. He who eats of my flesh and drinks of my blood shall have eternal life. Why? Because it's a representation of his word and his spirit where we're constantly being filled with light. Always being filled. But one of the things the enemy wants to do is drain you. So when the spirit is telling you something, you disobey it, you're going into a place where your light is going to begin to get diminished. But as you repent, you get refilled again. Hallelujah. And the darkness proves the light again. The darkness proves the light that darkness is a loser. Second Corinthians 11. That's why the devil shakes when he sees you coming. He's afraid of you. So, because you expose him. Second Corinthians verse 11 verse, I mean, uh, chapter 11 verse 12. But what I do, Paul said, I also continue to do that I may cut off the opportunity from those who desire an opportunity to regard just as we are in the things which they boast. For such are what? False disciples. Deceitful workers transforming themselves in the apostles of Christ. And no wonder for Satan himself transforms himself into a what? Now, he transforms himself to an angel of light, but he can't comprehend the light. <laughs> Amen. Does everybody got it? Because darkness cannot comprehend light. Because if Satan really got it, he wouldn't be doing what he's doing. Therefore, it is no great thing that his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. I say again, let no one think me a fool, if otherwise at least receive me as a fool, that I also may boast a little. So Satan and his kingdom can't comprehend the light and the love of God, but they transform themselves to imitate truth, the light, to deceive tr the true light that's within the children of light. So he tra they transform themselves to try to deceive and they also maintain uh, an arena of slavery because of so many false religions. But if one is maintaining the true light and not opening the door to the counterfeit light, he will be able to expose it. Is everybody with me? He will be able to what? Expose it. Expose it. See, so one of the things that's always important because one of the things the enemy always wants to do is knock on a door. Hey, I'm the light, man. I got a message for you. Come on. I want you to say, who's there? I'm the light. Well, come on in. Oh! Then you realize later that you were lied to. Because the fruit of that light is darkness. Are you listening? <laughs> so what's happened is you just opened the door and don't even realize it. And you're thinking, oh my gosh, I thought that was God. Man, I, I, I would have laid my life down for that. Well, you almost did. Then the true light rescued. <laughs> Second John verse 6. Second John verse 6. Children of light. I'm a, what do you say? I'm an eternal light. Second John uh, verse 6. Would you read it with me, please? This is love that we walk according to His commandments. Now remember, His commandments are words of light, aren't they? 
This is the commandment that as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. For many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh. This is the deceiver and antichrist. Look to yourselves that we do not lose those things we worked for, but that we may receive a full reward. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. Are you listening? He who does not abide in the doctrine of Christ. Why? Those are his commands. It is the doctrine of the anointing. That's what the Spirit says now. Why? Because he's giving you light all the time. He's always giving you a meal to eat of light. When he speaks to you and you say yes, more light comes. You're always being filled with light as you're in fellowship with him. That's why it's so important about having fellowship with the spirit of light. Again, whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. And if anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, do not receive him into your house nor greet him. For he who greets him shares in his evil deeds. That's why the word says many will fall from the faith in the latter days, taking heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. There's a great battle of darkness that attacks light. And the great battle that light exposes darkness. I, I, did you get that? There's a battle that's going on that darkness is attacking light. But light is exposing the darkness. So if the person is truly filled and right with God, as they're being attacked, they sh darkness should be always exposed. And as darkness is exposed, it's always proven in the light. Now, that means there's a difference in the doctrine that one is truth and one is lie. One promotes darkness and one promotes light. I want to share with you about a vision I had this morning. And, um, you know, it kept coming to me in the area of doctrine and, and so forth. And, um, you know, I, I saw a, a pastor on TV that said, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm allowing, uh, there, there, there was a, a mosque being built down from his church. And he said, I'm, uh, whatever, the priest or whatever, the mosque, Muslim, whatever, came over to him and said, can we use your building until ours is finished? And um, he said, no, this was on the news last night or somewhere, yeah. And he said, yeah. Yeah, you can use our building. And I thought afterwards, Lord, what servant would allow someone into their building in that arena to use their building? And one of the things that kept coming to me was the area of, in other words, even though he wasn't cooperating with his the doctrine, but he was allowing the doctrine to be spread through the building. Has everybody got it? And it grieved my spirit. And I thought, this may, this guy may have a form of Christ-like by, by a neighbor saying, if you need something, give it to him. But there are certain things you don't do. I did not agree with it. I'm sorry. Does everybody understand that? I didn't have a witness in it. Anyways, I saw that and then, then this morning, as I was praying, I had a vision, and I saw this b big building, this big business, big, all these big business buildings, and there was a gentleman, well, I can't say gentleman, I, he was bald-headed, he had no hair on him, and he was big, and he was lurking behind the buildings. And I realized that every building he was, and he was run behind the buildings, running behind the buildings. And, uh, and I, and I'm thinking, and then I realized that the buildings were all business buildings. And the Lord said to me, that was the demon of Allah. And I said, the demon of Allah? He says, yes, that's the demon of Allah. 
because he likes to, he uses businesses. He uses money. He promotes the love of money. So that he can, in, in, in hope to infiltrate the kingdom of light and draw people away. So the demon now, Allah was hiding behind these large businesses and these large buildings, manipulation of the love of money, the love of pride, the love of hatred, and a servant to the prince of death who sits at Satan's table of counsel. And I saw, and then I saw like Satan's table of counsel with all of these high ranking angels and so forth. And there was the prince of death. And Allah was a servant to him. So everything is to promote death. Has everybody got it? I want to try and see if I can recall everything here. So the demon of Allah, hiding behind these large businesses and these huge buildings, manipulating or that was promoting the manipulation of the love of money, the love of pride, the love of hatred, and a servant to the prince of death who sits at the Satan's table of counsel. And his purpose is to promote and complete destruction to mankind. Annihilation to mankind. So that they destroy one another. Because he promotes hatred. His whole purpose is for man to destroy one another. And to make, uh, and to make mankind bring him into the slavery of his doctrine of lies and religion of antichrist. In other words, I don't know, in the word it talks about the battle between Isaac and Ishmael. But it, it wasn't a battle between them, but one was, which one came first? Ishmael. Again, darkness. Then Isaac, the promised seed. And and you can look at uh, Abel and Cain. Which one came first? Cain. Then Abel. So darkness first. And we're going to go more into the uh, arena between Isaac and Ishmael. But, but not tonight. But that battle is still going on. The battle of light and darkness. The battle of the promised seed. And um, as the as the dream can, as the vision continued, I saw Buddha. Now, remember that the demon of Allah was running uh, on the earth behind these big business buildings, and the things that he was promoting: the love of money and hatred and jealousy and so forth. And then underneath, underground, I saw Buddha. The demon of Buddha. And he was sitting next to a 55 gallon drum underneath the ground, you know, like tunnels under the ground. And he was sitting in this, in this position. And in this 55 gallon drum, there was fire and it was like for people to come to get warm. And, and everybody all around him, was coming. And in other words, that fire was producing a light, but it was a false light. And one of the things that I saw and I sensed in my spirit that he was speaking calmly to the people. So he was promoting a false peace, but what this false peace was doing was leading them all into poverty. All into poverty. Thinking that they're, they were doing good by self-sacrifice but it was a self-sacrifice of not serving God. It was a self-sacrifice of a poverty mentality. Because many people have taken vows. I saw a priest on TV one day. He said, I've taken the vow of poverty. I thought, what an idiot. (laughs) God said, I've come to bring you life and life abundantly, not to put you in poverty. So underneath the ground, Buddha was under the ground sitting up in his stance and and that fire was burning next to him. And all these people were gathered around him. And he was promoting a false peace, but he was leading them into poverty. 
in bondage, in debt. Everything was to be removed from the individual. And then they had a false piece about giving everything. You know, they've got all these goofy religions and stuff that are out there. They give everything. And there's nothing wrong with giving things away, but they, they're not giving it for, um, they're not, they're not, they're not giving it to help people. They're giving it to promote poverty in their life. Thinking that this is a sacrifice. But God's not interested in sacrifices, is He? He's interested in obedience. Is everybody okay? And this has continued on. Then I saw that the religion of the Antichrist was being established. And it was not the one underneath. It was the one on top. And I thought, wow. It's getting closer Closer and closer. And I kept thinking about the false doctrines that it's promoting darkness. The false doctrines that's promoting bondage. The false doctrines and all of these areas of lies because they're not truths. So how could there be truth? There can't be any light if there's no truth. And if there's not truth, there's not light. So all of these individuals... And if you look around the country, around the globe right now, look where all of these disasters are happening big time. Many disasters in these areas where these demons, these false gods are reigning. Right now. All over. Mudslides, floods, all kinds of things that are happening in disasters. Earthquakes, volcanoes. I mean, I'm telling you, all kinds of things are happening. Why? Because God is shaking. But, all of these things are going to prove light. That's why it's so important that you maintain, no matter what, no matter where you are, no matter what's going on, you are children of light. Go to Romans 12. Romans chapter 12 and verse 11. Let's start at verse 3. For I say through grace given to me. Is everybody there? Come on, read together. To everyone who is among you, not to think of themselves more highly than we ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as we have many members in that one body, but all members do not have the same function, so we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having then gifts differing, According to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation. He who gives, let him uh, with liberty. He who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is what? Evil and cling to what is Good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor, giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing what? Steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you and bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. And do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it's possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. And in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on their head. Nice. So this is what we're to be an example of. Amen. This is where we're to shine our light. Go to Ephesians 5. In verse 7. Read it with me, please. 
Therefore, not do not be what? Partakers with them, for you were once darkness, but you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And they have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them, because when they are exposed, it's going to what? Prove the light. For it is shameful to even speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things are exposed and are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Praise God. Let's go to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. So we are to put on the armor of light. We are children of light. Oh, yes. Do you know that God has sent you out as a light of salvation? Because God is light, right? And the Bible says that we are the temple of God. So God sends us out as a light of salvation wherever we go. Every we go. You are the light of salvation. You are the light of healing. You are the light of provision. You are the light of truth. And you are the light of life. And there's so much darkness that is trying to cover up the light. Overtake the light. And so many people are being deceived in so many ways. And they're trying to live for their own agendas instead of the eternal agenda. And by living for their own agenda, it's beginning to cover up the light of God that dwells within us. That's why the Bible says, make no place for the devil. Amen. Make no place for darkness so that your light can shine. In James chapter 1 and verse 16, do not be what? Deceive my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every precious gift is from above and comes down from the what? Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. For of His own will He brought us forth by the word of truth, which is the light, that we might be a kind of first fruits of His creatures. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of a man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Be a doer of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. And I want to close at 2 Peter 3. I have more, but I think this is sufficient. 2 Peter chapter 3. We have a, a, there's a, a package teaching also called a prophetic people which is very powerful. And it's got the prophetic people, spiritual rewards, bread of life, and the crown of glory in it. And it really it like covers and it promotes the arena of children of light. Because we are children of light. In 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, would you read it with me? The Lord is what? Not slack concerning His promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness. Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. 
Nevertheless, we, according to His promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by Him in peace without spot and blameless. And consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they also the rest of the Scriptures. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware, lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, and being led away with the error of wicked, but grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to Him be glory both now and forever. And everybody said, Amen. Now lift your hands and drink some light. <laughs> drink some light and let the light of Christ so shine through you. And wherever you go, May His light shine through you and expose darkness to prove the light. Amen? And to God be the glory. Hallelujah.